Okay. Let's go over all things out. Shout out, even though I may talk bad about them, though this is good content. CBS Miami, shout out to them. Um, so, of course, I'm using them in fair use. The, but uh, so I don't even have to give a shout out, but they, they deserve it. The uh, but they don't know what they're looking at, also. So, let's uh, talk about that Miami um, condo residents forced to evacuate. Hey, ladies, good morning. Yeah, like you said, that clock is ticking. People who live in this building here in Miami told they only have until eight o'clock this morning to get whatever they can and get out of the building. Their building at this point now deemed unsafe. I think unsafe. They basically temporarily condemn it um, because the uh, con they didn't perform the work. Now they, that that's kind of unfair too. You'll just know you'll know, and I'll explain why in a minute. This is fifty fifty Northwest. You guys can look this up. You can probably find the violations. You guys are awesome. That's the address there. Seventh Street here in Miami. We're told that the building has right there. There we go. What do we notice now? This is what I, I, I alluded to before in previous videos, that if the building, the building, the building repairs called for, sorry about tapping on the table. So the building repairs called for these temporary supports and displacing the vehicles out of the parking garage down there while they did it. They had an overflow they had considered and everything. Now this contractor I talked about it before, this engineer rather, he's, and I showed him on the 101 South they call it now. He did repairs there before. I think they took many years to do those repairs. Now, they had four floors. I talk about the first floor being a major issue. This is uh, obviously rush jacking. Now, now where the steel is swollen and pushed the uh, female off. They, did, they, uh, they, I don't know if he's on top of the uh, concrete footer, the piers here, wherever they did it here, the pier cap where they figure this out because I don't see it exposed here. This is sort of like, I think I can lay down this uh, two by treated lumber tube. I'm gonna insult it and then I'm gonna take it back. This two by 10. But their spacing for the supports are very close, which is beautiful. This makes it what guys, what, what do we have here? Some of you, what's my girl? Carolina baby, Carolina baby. What area is this? This is right around the column, and you guys can guess it too. This is right around the column. What area is this, and then what area is this out here? So what area would this intent, the intent, be, be reinforcing right now with these supports? I don't want to say in the comments. I want to let you guys just say it now. Come on now. What is the area... What is the area that they're supporting right here? So the... Uh, um, what area is, this, is the intent of this? Also... What is going on here? You guys tell me. It, buckling, buckling would look something like, I don't know if this would allow me to do it this way, but let's try it. Say this is the column right there and behind us. Get over here. Now, you know what? I've got another way to do it. Like keeping that there and bringing this up here and bringing this down here. Sliding this dot down to here because we're going to put it right, right about that steel level. And we'll grab another one, right? The structural we'll, issues. Structural issues, yeah. So then we'll grab another one. And now they, from what I understand, they had uh, uh, their timeline. They didn't finish their timeline. Now, why do I think it's unfair? Because obviously an engineer would have done his temporary supports you see here. And these temporary supports... Um, would be I don't want to give away the area. I want you guys to give it away. I guess I can give it away now you guys now no, I won't give it away. I'll wait this area here is obviously supported Via engineering. This is buckling look it pulls away Right you can pick any point you want where it starts pulling away bursting away the concrete bursting away the uh, the, the, con the concrete and also the steel this would have to be the steel changing directions So I ask you does this steel look straight to you? Does it still look straight? Interesting enough, stirrups um, are a good indicator. Are these stirrups, let's see, they go wrap around right here. See them? See them right there? Those stirrups, do they look like they're, they're uh, breaking to you? Do they look elongated? They look like they're, the. do they have the 135 degree, they look like this. If you could look down the column, they would probably look like... Uh, Oh shit, I started the wrong direction. Well, I'll try to get this right anyway. 
Oops. Oh. It would look something like something like that. And so you would you'd be able to see if they're if they're elongated, you'd be able to tap a hammer on them to see if they're feeling tension on them to see if this is trying to buckle outwards. Or, you know, is it two things going on here? Do we have um of course we have this this, this serious uh, steel, um, the marriage being broken up by the husband and wife together there. Uh, we have no settlement issues here. It appears this is right on plane. This does look like this is not a repair, though. There's no clean cuts here. There's no probing. But we do have a transfer of the loads into these columns, possibly. To figure that out, wrap them again. Tap them with a hammer. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's use what the guy used, the golf club. Really, it, it doesn't matter. It does work. Golf club is just as well. Hammer, golf club, what's the difference, right? So, you know, so you tap it. And which one's going to, they're going to sound differently. They're going to be tighter. And that's the one that's taking more of the load. And it's going to start giving you a profile of your deck above. Considering that all of these are are, are um, supported with the right amount of uh, tension at the roof right here. So the right amount of pressure on the column, this becomes the column now, the, the, the braces, these braces here. So the right amount, you know, they, they screw it and just snug it right up. Now we, we can start telling if it, uh, the, the, the forces here, which one is reacting, which one is more tight, is the one that, oh, shit, we got an issue there. So the, they don't appear to be backing it up with uh, structural analysis. They're just backing it up with saying, you didn't. Structural analysis, I don't mean by formulas, I mean by really the profile of this specific, specific location here, and then another one, and then another one, everyone being very specific, not running through some finite element program saying this is this and that, because we're looking at something very specific now. If you can put in your finite element program, rush jacking, tell me what percentage of, uh, of uh, how does that work? Just tell me if it should be able to predict the rest of this in a timeline, shouldn't it? Shouldn't you be able to tell me since, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You actually don't know what steel this is from, what year, what manufacturer. You have no history. There's no database. This, this is, this is, there's no database of this. So there is no database like the uh, Secret Service uses for, for inks and things like that. We don't have a database where they want to say where you can get all this steel and start compiling it and saying this deal is composed of this and start documenting exactly where it is it's not it's not done like that now they are recording and documenting steel differently but we're not we're not we're not there anymore and i don't want to give away okay i'll give away sorry i gotta um uh, i gotta be careful what i said i don't give away my sources um okay hard rock hard rock um um, collapse, Hard Rock Hotel collapse. That steel, I had the guys from the steel, a couple of guys from the steel um, manufacturing place called me and just said, this steel is wrong. Now that has not come out in any documents yet, but they just said this steel was just, it was just junk. It was like soft. It just burned right through every time they welded. It was like really soft metal. But that was not really our failure, was it? But they still, the guys still got hold of me and complained about the steel. Once they saw my channel, a couple of guys did. And one guy, I will tell you, he made it very clear to me that he cried when that collapse came down. He feels like he should have said something. It was a couple of uh, posts that he typically said would have been larger. And they did it with uh, like 4 by 4s which is really reduced. Um, and so he was, quite, he was quite upset. Now, good news is I can't remember, uh, remember his name. So that's the good news. So I don't have to worry about giving him away. I just can't remember. I can't remember his name. All right. So then we have, uh, which is great. I'm just letting you know. So don't try to subpoena me on that one there. You're going to get nothing. I can't remember his name. So there's nothing to, nothing to subpoena me for if, if you're still following the hard rock thing. Any of the lawyers over here or anything else. You got, no, you got nothing from me. I don't remember his name. I remember the rough content of the phone call. And, oh, I'm sorry. I will give away that. Just find out the steel manufacturer. Go there and find their records. Uh, get their samples of steel. 
they they had some that you could still get them. They had you know obviously they had some at the yard still. They were still they were still producing uh, samples of steel. They still had samples of steel there at the time. Uh, okay, so just timeline it. Go back. Back to this. So the stirrups are uh, are you would tell if they're if they're experiencing a buckling moment if they're pushing outwards. This would be a tight. This would be very tight. Right now the concrete's encapsulating it, locking the steel in place up here. So uh, most mostly up, up top here. Well, well that was screwed up. And and like a 45 in that way and a 45 in this way, meeting a 90. That's just the way forces love 45s. They just love 45s. You can find them almost everywhere. So this jacking this off, it took the why did it not jack it off in the mid going through the center of the column? Well the the, the cover is only two inches. So as it expands, it's easier to jack off two inches of this uh, concrete than it is to uh, try to break internally, which also would meet the steel it would have to push against on the other side, the opposite, opposing steel. The opposing steel. So now this is a very small column, but we don't know the spacing and what the loading of the loading of it is. But that steel, it looks massive. I mean, I don't know what size steel that is, but that looks massive they look like columns themselves look they look like columns i mean they swelled up just a little bit pull, knock that off and it doesn't take much to knock it off if you guys look at rush jacking you can still see the profile of the ribs and all that it does not take much because concrete sucks sucks uh, all right so concrete would be intention at that point internally pushing outwards by the steel swelling Internally pushing outwards, and it only takes about, let's say this is 4,000 psi. It only takes about 10% of psi uh, for it to uh, fail in tension. Well, that would be internal tension trying to fracture it away. But it also has a void now. The void is created by the steel. So it would look like, let's grab a round one, and let's, well, oh, that's not quite round. Let's go with that as round. So let's look at the top view. Wait a minute. I'm trying to grab it. This is the top view. Now let's put the concrete around it a bit. So let's do this one. I don't know if it's going to let me cover it. Yeah, I might have to do this one. And then move this one on top of that one. Well, that didn't work. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing on you. There we go. Let's just use this one piece of steel here. Um, I guess we can use two. Oh, somebody taught me how to copy them. Oh, you guys are awesome. Some of you didn't know your stuff. I do follow some of your tips on the keyboard stuff, as you can see. Let's put this in here. Let's just give it four pieces. That's what it looks like from the top view down. If we can chop this off and look down it from standing our heads over top of it. That's what the, let's call it these four pieces. And that stirrup thing would be wrapped around here. Um, so stirrupy, stirrupy, let's see if I can do stirrupy. Gotta try to scale this a bit. Uh, well, this is gonna be tough. Yeah, it won't let me draw inside there, so I'm gonna have to pretend like I can draw. Oops. But let's just do that for a second. Let's just grab this. And these will be. The this would be the stirrups around it. Oh, that was pretty close. Let's just move it in a little bit. <laughs> so that's that little... Here are a couple of images that show, well, weird colors, but uh, stirrup and how they're configured roughly for you guys. Stirrupy things right here. So now as that tries to push apart, it can't. It's just, this keeps it in... Those They, they, they were contention. So if it tries to buckle and put and swell out, as we were talking about here, if it tries to swell out, you know, if it tries to swell outwards, it's confined by these stirrups right here, right? So it's confined by these guys if they try to swell out. But look here, look, look, let's 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 keep it. Let me do the stirrup here. Let's do forty. This one. I know it's bigger. But there we have. So we have this part of the concrete missing here. And if we do, if we do them intersecting like this, you start seeing 
what's really going on here. You start seeing that, oh, wait a minute, this isn't as bad as it may look. Okay, I gotta push this one, pull this one down. So now you, you can see now when this little bit of swelling, so I'm gonna swell this up just a little bit, watch. Whoop, when it swells, let's put it, let's do this. Let's push this out. Let me grab the other one. Hmm. Let's make that one smaller. And let's do the profile like that. I'm out to the edge there, and let's move this here. And you see it's confined in the stirrup here. So there's going to be some, so this is swelling. Even the stirrup swells a little bit. It swells less than this is what I find is the stirrups are usually profiled pretty good. The remaining it looks pretty good. The This is the part that swells even more. But now watch when I, if this is concrete, all this is concrete all around the steel, right? I mean around the steel here. See it? Concrete. Now it's going to swell just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. See it? I'm just cycling for you. It doesn't cycle. I'm just I'm just showing you. Well, if it vibrates, it cycles. But the uh, the I, I don't I don't have a force for that. So then um, it just a little bit, and it only needs a little bit of pressure. And where's this concrete? How can this con this concrete? Let's just call this concrete here. It's internal, right? It's it's trapped. It's 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 every it's trapped in itself. It's locked in. It's concrete. It's, as I say, it's very brittle. But it can take about 400, so that's 4,000 PSI. So it would take about 400 only PSI to, to, make, it, to make it want to uh, fracture in tension. The tension comes from the steel swelling. And it's outwards like that. So I'm going to put that inside, right? Inside there, inside here. Let's remove this one. Let's do a little circle. Good. Let's put that there. And it's everywhere, though. It's 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 all the way around. It's a 360, right? Rust. It's however the rust de develops. The rusted, the most rusted side would probably be, well, wherever the most rusted side is. The backside sometimes cannot be cannot be as much rust. But that swelling inside here creates an, a only needs 400 psi, just a little bit, and that pushes against the concrete. The concrete fractures, burst, if you will. So you're not look you're looking at the, the male here, as I say, male and female. You're looking at the male swelling up and causing all this tension inside that inside the the uh, the, the female, the the concrete, and she just. She just create. She just caves. She just temp. She only needs ten percent of loving, and she just burst apart. She's just done. All right. She calls it a day. She go gets a cigarette somewhere. So the, the this this woman over this part of the woman, she went and got a cigarette. As the one lady said, I need a cigarette now. And I did one of my videos. And I said, okay. So that I'll I'll make sure to get you a cigarette in the next next uh, content. So it swells ten percent, and she go gets she she go she go it swells ten percent, and she go gets a cigarette. So uh, out the cigarette, never come, never to come back. It's like that was too much loving. That was too much. She never comes back. Need a new man at that point. Uh, no, she needs a patch job. <laughs> to uh, patch jobs don't work. The patch jobs just don't work. You guys know it in relationships. Patch jobs don't work. You got to be able to accept it. But this is accept that this this is a constant maintenance. This is not just a patch job. This is a forever maintenance. This is not. Oh, we got it now. We use we use rapid set product that really won't eat at it as much. We've got it. This is done. This is a one and done now. There, there'll never be a one and done because all elements want to go back to their original state. Steel is multiple elements. It is not stable. Oh, how do we know that? Well, you just put it in concrete. You see how stable it is. You lay steel out by itself, and you see how stable it is. Um, you need it needs protection. Now there is a form. There's many ways to get there. But it's too expensive. So consequently, this is going to keep happening, not now, but forever. But forever. And it's a terrible marriage. It always needs therapy. All right. So I just wanted to help you explain what you're looking at here, why the, why the section's off. Because that little bit of swelling, those swelled up and they're rusting equally. That's very telling because it, it popped it all the way off. And now in the middle, so what does it show you about the middle? What does it show you about, you see it here, the piece here. See the middle? It shows you that 
this is this this section here right here you still see the paint on it is more strong and stable that it was able to take the pressure that hasn't been created yet to pop it off down here it was created it swelled and this reduced in size so from here oh, I'm never gonna get this right no it wasn't okay we'll go with this one so it reduced in size the opening reduced in size so this opening as the concrete as a steel swelled on both sides reduced this size in here created the pressure between here right in here in real life and it dropped off the concrete there so initial step as you do forensic real forensics you can see that okay so first to go on down here is the outer corner second to go is the middle all right we got rusting from the bottom up do we possibly have contact with with water on our steel that's rusting from the bottom up. Let's go ahead and expose it. Let's look at, well, looky here. That's pretty damn wet there, isn't it? So do we have contact with steel um, on here? And you can check that. You can check the moisture content, obviously. And a lot of these are below grade. You know, maybe they need to abandon all the parking garages there and, uh, and call it a day. Be, call, you know, abandon the parking garages, you know, overload it with supports. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, this one's, a, this one's a tough one because this isn't going to stop. This is, this, cause it's not one, one, you know, $40,000 repair. This is, oh, here comes $40,000 again in a few years. And this, this appears to be painted here. Now let's hear it. And the building's engineer had been working with the city to get those. Okay, so now I, I can see the dimensions now. It looks like a third piece of steel in there. Oh, the back side. Been repaired all the way up to here. Obviously, because now it shut down a whole damn building. So the building, who's responsible for shutting down the building? Who didn't who didn't who didn't get these repairs done? So you can see in the background, they they're on they're on each one of these guys. Now, so what's being repaired? What's being supported here? What what what's going on here? Well, we got two failures, don't we? We got a potential failure here of this of this failure in the stirrups and swelling and losing its its ability to st stand straight, but we also are protecting against what above? What's above? This uh, we're, we're in a parking garage, so what's above is here a floor of some type or a ceiling. I'm sorry, a floor of some type, whether it be a pool deck or the parking garage or the first floor level. But it appears that all of these are temporarily supported under repair, but really here, there, there is in line, and that one. Looks like the worst one I could find. Had it. I'm looking in the background there. All right, this still looks pretty plumb. And there's our there's our pressure here. So we got more swelling here between these two, and we see the break off there, <laughs> 45, bottom of the stirrup. The dissection of the metal creates voids in there. That is the weakest point. And this stirrup is, and I've proved this many times in breaking up concrete. That I could smash it, and always it's always breaking at the dissection, your your control joint. Your this stuff creates control joints, even if it's brand new. It's still creating an internal control joint, a dissection of the concrete with the void it makes of the steel. Yes, the steel is the what's keeping this marriage together, but it also creates a void. And there's a void, and look at the right where the void is where it fractured around and blew off this section here and there's a cross section of it there and there's a swells that'll take this out too obviously because the other side's missing so in steps as it goes outer corner so outer corner internal by the stirrups 45 more swelling it finishes off the internal again the internal here again so in steps as we look as i look at that one some evaluating that one spe very specific on that one of what I'm observing. Now that has no supports. This has supports. Okay, so this is this this I can now explain this a little differently. This appears to be steel um, right here uh, protection that was here. So we won't say it did it, it, it break off in that the way I described it, but that's steel. That's steel. That's where the steel was. 
protection against cars. Steel, so the steel was added last because that's bare. It was added first, rather, before they paint it. And that was the, what it looked like before. Mm. So then they painted, they, didn't, they did not paint behind the steel. So I got to process the data. Let me drink something here. So they didn't paint behind the steel. So that was exposed. How much water does that steel wick up? Hmm. Well, how much water did it hold, if any at all? Good news is I, it's not touching the floor. It has some structural issues, and the building's engineer had been working. We'll see it not touch the floor. So there's the sheet painting. Let me go back a little bit. The building has. She didn't see. I need to get to the floor. Structural issues. I don't think it's touching the floor. I think they went in the paint all the way down to the floor. And the building. So it appears that steel strip was added, and then they painted. I think it's paint. Engineer had been working. That would explain. Yeah, it looks like paint all the way down to there. So if the steel was there, they wouldn't have painted down to there. So the steel is working with the city to the get floor. those under repair, but really they had about forty-five. I'm trying to see it back here. Five days were told to correct. And there it is off the floor, pretty high there, which is good. Now you don't have to worry about wicking of it coming up. But now we know the steel was added, and then it was painted this this uh, beautiful pink or whatever. The issues. The engineer and the building staff here. All right, there it is. There's some more steel there. It appears it represents the steel, and that has no supports in it. So they've got a. They definitely found. Oh no, they opened it up over here. Look, look. They did open it up. This one they didn't open up. This one's opened up. But am I looking at fractures on the ground? I'm looking at this, or am I seeing ghost? This appears to be punching shear through the through the punching shear through the floor. Remember, I say punch shear meaning roof, and for me, punch shear. Now you guys got me all mixed up. Punching shear meaning down. This appears to be my punching shear, and my punch shear protection is here in the trench. This this is odd. This is an odd duck because I would like to see them open it up. If that's open, so they can figure out where the hell they do the supports. Otherwise, they're just putting it on the steel, on the floor, which just stresses this. And now that could be broken because of the load of the floor above stressing on this concrete. So thank you for being part of this little lesson, if you will. And what are you looking at here? I don't want to give it away, but I do. Um, you're, again, you're looking at punching shear and punch shear problems. Um, along with some spalling that could possibly... Next step will be buckling of the column, but these they have temporary supports here to transfer the loads and they're having problems figuring out obviously the repair and money for the repairs. Because if you had endless money, they would this would have been taken care of. That's why I can obviously say that or apparently say that it's money. Money, if you had endless money, it would be done.